Werken von Theo Sparks, der jetzt zu Ihnen sprechen wird und der ein Plädoyer für die Bedeutsamkeit von Animationsinhalten in Kinderprogrammen halten wird. Herzlich willkommen, Theo Sparks. Sparks. Uh, I'm from Wales and I do lots of like, animation stuff, so that's what I'm going to be talking about today. Uh, yeah. So I owe everything to my mum. Uh, she's a diversely creative individual. She does lots of lots of different stuff. Uh, she does like drawing and painting. Uh, she does uh, she makes sculptures from wood and stone and metal. Um, she does lots of different. Stuff. Uh, she also manages like a local art studio. Uh, she teaches kids animation. Uh, she's got her own little upcycled brand. Um, yeah, she's been making clothes recently. So she does lots of different creative things. And I think that's really important for like just doing lots of different things. Yeah, really important. Diverse. Um, she also like suffers from depression. So um, being creative is like a therapy. It like grounds her and uh, so an outlet for her emotions. Um, she always like encouraged me to just do whatever I wanted to do and like never forced me into anything. And um, like, that's really, really important. So yeah, always very supportive of anything I did. Uh, so animation has inspired me from an early age. Uh, like what, what kid doesn't, doesn't love cartoons? Um, um, so animation is the process of like an insane amount of images or like individual pieces of art um, flickering at an insane rate, it's really fast, it just lives. Um, so yeah. Um, yeah, so if you think about it, uh, animation works quite like the brain, um, processing a wide variety of different content, uh, engaging the core senses to achieve a greater understanding as a whole. Uh, so from an early age I knew I was dyslexic, dyspraxic, I was always falling over, bumping into things, uh, Forgetting everything, uh, yeah, jumbling words around, just really forgetful and everything. So, um, so when I was when I was little and growing up, I was always drawing, writing stories, doing stuff like that, drawing and stuff. Uh, so at some point, I teamed up with a friend, Althea. Um, she's like an avid writer, and she's she's doing a master's in creative writing at the moment. Um, and yeah, so that collaboration, it taught me, this was like my first creative collaboration. And like, that's really an important thing in animation, like, like Tim just was talking about and everything. Collaboration, your strengths, you learn what your strengths and weaknesses are. Um, you have to think critically and just all the different skills just come together into one big thing. Um, uh, so in secondary school, I was always like doodling all over my workbooks just all the time. Uh, the teachers called it uh, scribbler, which means scribbling in Welsh, because I'm from Wales. And um, yeah, so I was always just doodling, drawing. My mum just said, my mum just said to ignore the teachers and just to just make art wherever inspiration may strike. So I just ignored the teachers and just kept on. And the teachers didn't really mind afterwards, so it was okay. So I've always been, I've always been doodling. It just helps me think. It helps me see my thoughts on paper. Like it helps me just, just, just get ideas and, and just a good way to relax and sort of engage myself with what's going on. Um, yeah, because like dyslexic people are like visual thinkers by nature, and also yeah, I've got a really bad memory as well. Um, so yeah, like I, I just like to take science instead of art in school because um, every lesson inspired a new way of looking at the world and made me think about the world around me. Um, but I wasn't really particularly good at science, but I did really still enjoy it, what they were talking about and stuff. I tried, um, the physics teacher said I should have taken art instead because of all my doodles and stuff, <laughs> but um, it was okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, now you can show them up a bit. Oh wait, no, 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 not yet, not yet. Uh, so one day when I got home from school, um, uh, Mark Pryke, uh, my mum's boyfriend at the time showed me how to bring inanimate objects to life. Uh, he introduced me to the world of uh, stop motion animation. Um, so he also oh, crap. he also made me think critically about my work. So that was really good to have a he kind of helped me improve and um, yeah really think about it critically and 
was really good to have that influence from a young age because my mum was always really just said she really loved it. She never really said how we could improve. So it's really good to have that influence from a young age. Uh, so stop motion animation is the process, is the, you basically move an object, take a photograph of an object, move it slightly and repeat over and over again until, yeah, so, um, yeah. So, um, so yeah, now you can, so I was just basically in my early years, I was just alone in my room, just moving past the scene. From, from, from the moment I learned this, I was just hooked, just an instant animation addict, cartoon junkie, alone in my room, just moving past the scene, taking photos, just over and over and over again, just really, just, yeah, absorbed in it. So I'm gonna show you like a little show reel of my work now, just a little, just when I was like between 10 and sort of 15 years old, just a little show reel of, my work. Yeah, that last one was actually like a little collaboration between me and my sister. Uh, but she did the music. She does lots of she does lots of stuff as well. She makes hats now. And, yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, so yeah, as you can see, I spent a lot of time alone growing up in my room, just on my own. Um, sometimes it provided an escape for me as a kid. Um, like I really like I love my mum, but um, sometimes her illness made me experience some crazy times when I was growing up. Um, also, I was like picked on as well because I was like weird. Um, so, like, it gave me a, a place to escape uh, my own world where I could create whatever I want and just yeah explore and create. Um, so yeah, I saw myself in um, Peter Parker, Spider Man, the um, avid creative photographer, um, unique superpowers. Um, so when I was thirteen, um, one of my little animations I was making uh, got into this big. Film Festival in Bradford, the Cooperative Young Filmmakers. So that was my first time I saw my work on the big screen. Uh, it was a really good audience. Uh, I got feedback from industry professionals. Uh, they just told me to keep doing what I was doing. So that's what I did. And it's just really great. So stuff like this, those kind of experiences for young people are like key to inspiring the, the next generation of filmmakers. Um, that bit, yeah, interact with other people and stuff like that. It's really good. Kids, kids something to aim for. Um, yeah, it inspires creativity. Um, so when I finished school, uh, I went on to study uh, creative media production, media filmmaking course in uh, Kuala Tukar. Um, they, would, it was just a really comprehensive course, like two years, like really, they threw everything, they, like the most I've worked ever, it was like really like loads of stuff. Um, so that's like Sue there, he's the course leader, R Richard, I mean, sorry, Richard Lewis, course leader and then Sue was a really big help as well. They just really, really pushed me to my limits. It was, it was really great. Just like being in that environment with all those um, creative people, like ideas bouncing all over the place, um, doing little random projects for fun. Uh, I learned what it takes to be a filmmaker and all the hard work it involves. Um, so then early on in the course, they encouraged us to sign up for this extra thing, Adobe Generations uh, after school. It's like an online classroom where they teach you loads of different things about that software. Uh, but I did the, um, they taught us, I wanted to do the Adobe Flash. They taught me, so they introduced me to the world of 2D animation. And from then on again, I was hooked and it was a different way of working for me and I wanted to try something new. And my room was just like really messy. It was just a new way, of, it was really good. I could see my drawings come to life. Um, so it was really great. And they gave us like homework um, every week. They gave us homework to do. So this is like the first one. Um, and then, um, yeah, so these sort of things really gave me something. It gave me, I had to do it every week, so I was really, it's for young people, and uh, 
So you pushed me to keep making 2D animations. But then at the end of the course, they announced the best student, and I won. I won the uh, the award of excellence. Um, so they gave me like an iPad, and um, and I kept, and the, all their Adobe software. So it was really cool. That was a really good thing to have. Um, so again, I was hooked uh, on 2D animation, and then in the second year of the media course, they encouraged us to apply for the BFI animation camp, and uh, one of those. Uh, it's like a one week animation course for 16 to 19 year olds. We thought it was really amazing being around all those people my age who all love animation like me. It was just meeting all those create those people, being in that environment, seeing everyone else who loves animation. It was really great. Um, yeah, so we were like, we had to, they also wanted we were to put into teams as well, we had to share ideas, we got to make our own film in teams, so we had to, everyone shared their ideas and we had to vote on the best one, and everyone really liked my idea about making a cup of tea, so um, we went with that, and like, I got to direct my own, I got to direct my first animation, I was in charge of like four other aspiring animators, so that was really cool, that was really good for VFI and everything, so you can show, I want to show this little film we made. They're an amazing opportunity for me at 17 years old. Just yeah, things like this are really getting kids to be creative. Yeah, it's really great. Um, so after I completed my media, uh, after I did the BFI, these were the BFI people. After I did my media course, these were the people left over on the media course. Uh, I went on to study a foundation in art and design at the Carmarthen School of Art. Um, so this was like really different to the media course. It was much freer. They just kind of let you get on with whatever. They weren't too concerned. They were more. It's more about the journey than the destination. They weren't too concerned with like right and wrong. It's more about just doing stuff and just seeing where it takes you, sort of thing like that. Um, so they encouraged you, encouraged us to try new things, uh, broaden our creative horizons. Um, the course motto was "What if?" meaning um, question everything. Uh, it can always be more than what it is. Don't settle for what you have. Uh, yeah, just it can always be more than what it is. Uh, so yeah, I learned that uh, getting out of your comfort zone is scary, but worthwhile. Uh, it's about um, stepping outside for a minute, uh, feeling the fresh air um, on your face, uh, uplifting breeze of inspiration flows through you and into your work. Um, so we're all born with uh, creative powers. Uh, it's a shame how so many of us along the way lose our sense of wonder and curiosity. Uh, so as we get older, we're told that everything is divided, everything has its place. Um, and uh, yeah, most people link creativity to just art and nothing else. Um, they think, you know, I'm not a painter, I'm not a musician, I'm not an artist, therefore I'm not a creative person. Um, but they forget that uh, art is everything and everywhere. Um, it's just, it's all the same thing, just in a different way. Uh, so like even just telling someone about your day, you're, you're creating a story, your own perceived uh, version of events edited and in your own sort of storytelling style. So everyone is creative every day, all the time. Uh, so that's why it's so vital to get kids making stuff, um, to make sure they don't forget that 
that euphoric feeling of inspired creation. Uh, so when I went into my foundation, I just wanted to draw from life and nothing else. I just wanted to get better at drawing, um, practice the craft and hone my skills because life drawing is really important for animation. So I wanted to get much better at that. Um, but then five months later, I was itching to make stuff move again. And because um, I was in the foundation, I wanted to try all the different ways you could possibly make animation. Um, so I was just trying out everything, everything, people, food, anything I could animate, I was trying to animate it. Um, so one day I was sitting in a lecture, I wasn't really, I wasn't really engaged with it, they were talking, I don't know, I wasn't really paying it, I don't know, she wasn't really speaking to me. So, um, and then, then randomly out of nowhere she put on a short film, uh, Furniture Poetry by Paul Bush, and it opened my mind and it was just crazy, like it was a whole new thing for me, I was like, insane. So this is it, and I was just, when I hit, yeah, when I saw this, uh, so he's linking physical objects together, seeing the natural, of the natural motion, how they fit together, it's, it's just a completely different thing that I've never seen before. As an animator, it's just a, bit, like a whole new world just waiting to be explored for me. Um, yeah, it was like a revelation, inspiration flowing through me. My curiosity had been activated, just a world of possibilities waiting to be explored. Uh, just one of those times where you say, well, now I've seen everything. Um, so, yeah. No, crap, no. So yeah, the more, the more exposed to creative ideas like this, uh, the best chance we give ourselves to think differently, understand our world in new and profound ways. Um, so that's why it's, it's kids who've been, you know, it's kids, you know, you have to show them lots of different things and then they'll give them that chance to do different things and try things in different ways. Um, so let's see, yeah, so basically I, I, I saw that, that furniture poetry and I was like, okay, I want to do stuff like this. So I made some little tests and I showed them to my tutor, Sean Vickery, who I can't thank enough. He was just amazing, like, directed my creative energies, just like, he knew exactly what to say all the time, just really good. Um, uh, so yeah, I made some tests. Uh, I made like this little test thing and he just like said, just like, okay, stop whatever else you're doing now and just focus on this new way of working because this is, this is something that this is sort of a new way of working, and um, yeah, it was, I, so I just I kept making tests, linking stuff together, uh, exploring my surroundings. Uh, I was exploring a new world, uh, animated reality. It combined photography with animation, and it was all about um, finding subjects and how they fit together. Um, it was very uh, spontaneous. I just walked out the door with a general idea, and it kind of led me to new things I wouldn't consider before, and, and I went with that, and then I just went with whatever the things. Um, I also felt really privileged to be animating outside because uh, that's something most animators can only dream of. I was literally, I was animating outside, I was animating this stuff it was, as a photographer as well. Um, so it felt like my own thing. Uh, I made my own rules, my own observations, trials and errors. Um, it reminded me of my science classes back at school, um, you know, testing things and uh, stuff like that. Um, uh, yeah, and it just reminded me how everything comes back to you, all those diverse things, it comes back to you at some point. Doing a variety of things was really key. Uh, so when it was done, it was selected into the UK's uh, leading film and animation festival in Kansas, and nominated for three awards. Uh, one of the awards was to be put into the nomination for the Oscars. Um, so this is my first major sort of festival experience. Um, yeah, it's like, well, what it was like to inspire a large audience with all those amazing people, big, big time people. And I was just there. Um, uh, yeah, it was really great, really amazing. Uh, so when I finished my foundation, uh, I was ready to start making again, and I had a brand new idea I wanted to explore. So Caleb Boyd's film Plum was a huge inspiration for this. Uh, it opened my mind to new possibilities. <laughs> So yeah, this was something new, a new thing for me, uh, something very different. Um, the idea that you can take drawings, spread them around a physical space, and then link them all up together to actually see the animation was just really inspiring to me. Um, so my idea was to do the same thing, 
but uh, in a very different way. Uh, my idea combines um, street art with um, the animation with street art, mixes stickers with photography, and links the real world to the digital world. Um, its aim was just to inspire, the same way I've been inspired by others. Uh, it's that euphoric feeling like anything's possible, uh, connecting the dots in your newly opened mind to explore what could be. Bernary is his box, a dream dodo hamburger from Stefan. Now dream do and Bristol, East of your anime girl. Between happy Cray Pepe Newid and Dangos Pepe Guahanol Ipobo Obanta. A project in and Cavino, Kel Street, Gada Animedio. My Bristol and Che Pepe Igunetan, across my Kel Street and Hubeth Maur Ama, my Maur Ma. My commander sees an anime of home, where the tubby or doodle bar sees doing tiny and when sketchbook. Doing tiny hino or doodle eye, the blown as I meant where the tubby or pepper got mad. A project in new sticker information. Do we buddy cray? Anime your other cover of the My gun I quit count from a dream print on the mats, a sticker of inigo, um, so doing Carl um, Nugid, a dream cut on the mats. Doing Hoppy, come with me on the media, or a cover of the other, e a big goyang. I hope painting world and a project on that to be ready at uh, 10 year, the still digital effects on the uh, manual and the camera. To be taking a good QR code, so I will get a scan your new good iPhone. I will get a scan your QR code equals when animate your. So that guy who I was inspired by, I sent it to him, and he's like a really big time animator, and he, he liked it on Premiere, and I, yeah, he said he, he really liked it. Uh, so I sent the idea to Channel 4 for their funding scheme around the maps. Uh, it's like a £4,000 funding scheme, they give you a bit of help, and they do really great. I sent them uh, and I, the idea along with the script and concept art, uh, all about um, curiosity, following your curiosity, inspiration. Um, all that exploration, all that sort of stuff. Um, they shortlisted me, which is really great. Um, 
and give the tablet. Um, and I did the best I could with the long list, I really tried, but um, in the end they said it wasn't quite there yet, so I was back to square one. That's okay. Uh, but then I sent the idea to a local animation studio, Fudge, and they said, they'd, they said they really liked it and I'll keep it in mind for the future. Um, uh, uh, last year it was, uh, they, it was selected for a film festival in Germany, uh, Weiterstadt Open Air Film Fest. So I got to, they, they, I got to go there, all expenses paid, and uh, present the idea uh, in front of a large audience, which was really great. It was really good response, loads of questions. Loads of, I could tell I'd inspired loads of different people. Very great to spread the inspiration, what, what its aim was. Um, yeah, it was really great. Um, so then, yeah, oh yeah, so this is the festivals outside open air, and the response from the audience was really good, people. Um, so then after that, after I came back from the festival, I started working for bands, uh, making music videos. Um, every new project was my chance to explore something new, because uh, they kind of gave me a lot of freedom with this, I could do whatever I want. So I saw it as an opportunity to try new things. Um, so the band Jupiter and Velvet, uh, wanted me to make something for their song, uh, Mars Ain't That Far. Um, <clears throat> they wanted something wacky and fun, like Scooby-Doo, but with characters and, and stuff like that. And like, I'd only just kind of, I'm not long started doing 2D animation, so it was my chance to kind of, and I'd done lots of weird projects before, so um, this one was a bit more conventional with characters and stuff like that, so it was kind of, for me, it was, it was doing something new, because it's like the same way everyone else makes animation. Uh, so was, it, for me, it was a new thing to explore. Uh, yeah, so you can show that actually, that's on. to our film festival again, which was really cool. I just came back from there two weeks ago, in Vita Stad. Um, and uh, yeah, it was amazing, really good. Met all the loads of cool people, and um, all these different, from all over, really great meeting all these different people. And <coughs> they also remember my sticker nation from last year, and um, they wanted me to make their ident, their little um, advert for the festival. So I, I, I was doing that beforehand, but, um, yeah, so like uh, I teamed up with um, my friend uh, Tom. Right there. We both sort of worked on the animation together. Uh, the I made the rules. I made were like um, he was in charge of the deer because that's their logo, and I, I did the little uh, boxes 
uh, we're all short video. So I was kind of focusing on kind of, it was an abstract, they, they said we, we could do an abstract sort of thing, and that's what I wanted to do. So I was working on the boxes. And, um, so I still need to actually make the stickers, I need to make it into a sticker. So you can show it, this is what we've done so far, but I, need to, I still need to make it into the stickers. So you can show it, so it'll, it'll be the same sort of thing, but in a sticker. It took a while to get that the speed of the stuff right. Um, so, but yeah, a few months ago, that animation studio I mentioned earlier, Fudge, they got in touch again because uh, they were interested in my sticker thing as well. Um, so they were creating the idents, the adverts for the Children's Media Conference of this year, 2018, and um, basically they just really liked my idea, so they wanted, to, they wanted, they got me involved. Um, so I got to do the animation stuff. Children's Media Conference, it's like a big conference. It's like a big conference. Um, so I got to do the animation stuff, and um, they had loads of different symbols I had to work with. They had a, a very strict plan, but I kind of got to do whatever I want. I um, could morph them in wherever I, way I want. So um, I was trying to morph them in different ways, and um, they kind of used what I did to kind of make, this, make it into a sort of digital thing. So they used my ideas and my motion and my everything I did um, to inform the final product. Uh, which they made, uh, so I think it was a little one, which is just like a little, yeah, so all these sort of little morphing things like that. Uh, so yeah, they used these things and then they made it into a more colourful thing, which you can show just now. So these are the items. <coughs> <laughs> because it's such a big event. And, you know, got, uh, so, about that. Um, so yeah, I joined the event, I met so many amazing people again, just loads of different people. Um, uh, I met these people from Gas Tank, um, and now we're working together on projects and stuff at the animation studio, so we're working on stuff. Um, also, I got to talk to uh, Finn Arneson, uh, Senior Vice President at Hasbro Studios. Um, and I told him about my idea uh, for a new way of playing board games, and he actually really liked it. And they're actually Hasbro now developing it now, and uh, they're trying to fit it into their company, which is really, really cool. And this kind of goes back to what I was talking about um, earlier, about being creative in a variety of different ways, doing lots of different things, uh, inspires new, unconventional ideas. Um, yeah, it inspires new, gives you a whole new way to look at the world. And it just, because I've never done any game things before, but just doing all these different things just gives you courage to try things in different ways and go beyond the comfort zone. Um, so I recently had another wacky idea, uh, teach animation to the public. Uh, again, I've never taught anything before or anything, but it's, I don't know, I just kind of wanted to give back and um, all those people have inspired me and helped and mentored me throughout my life uh, and how I never have I don't know, I, I want to provide something really, I don't know, I teach you know, kids and adults, anyone who wants to learn, um, yeah, um, I just want to keep it going sort of thing. Um, also, like, public animation courses are really rare, so I kind of fill that gap, like, I never really see any public animation courses, usually you've got to sign up for a full programme, but this thing, it's like a few weeks or whatever, so, it's, yeah, um, I always, like, give, um, yeah, I always like give like live demonstrations and stuff. Um, I always I show them what they're doing and I talk about it. And this is just like a student show of some of the students. I only started doing this a few months ago, but I now have regular students coming every week because um, 
because it's just there isn't anything else around and nobody else does anything. So um, you always see like you know life drawing or blah blah blah, but you never see animation and lots of people do want to learn this sort of stuff. Um, but yeah, I always like I always get people around whatever I'm doing, uh, uh, engage with the core senses like you know um, they can interact, they can ask me questions. That's why like YouTube tutorials are so popular. You know, watching you learn by watching and doing. Um, uh, this is just some more student show I work. Uh, they always have to work together. I always want to make a collab something collaborative. Uh, so this all these different drawings are creating something together as a team. Uh, brings out their own strengths and weaknesses. That's always about learning who's good at what and stuff, using them to their advantage. I'm always getting them to think critically as well. You know, is this could be this better? Blah, blah, blah. Always asking them questions about stuff, uh, different ways. Um, I, do, I always, I also always offer a prize at the end of the week. Uh, whoever's impressed me the most, I, um, I usually got like a, some pencils or pens or something to sort of spark their creativity. Just kind of give them something to aim for, some some kind of prize. You know, like I was saying earlier, it's like giving them something a, a reason, and it does like push them to do better. Even though they're just like pens or whatever. Just the way they want them. They want to win. They want to, um, you know, something. Um, but yeah, it's so rewarding giving them this knowledge back. Um, they're always really excited when they see the art moving, um, just the same way I was when I started learning this stuff. Um, so going back to the sticker stuff, just kind of the main reason I'm talking. Um, I want to talk about where I see it going, um, the potential it has to inspire creativity in young people. Uh, kids. Today, kids today are <coughs> uh, saturated in media. Um, TV is a queer uh, of uh, turning Don't people into you know, mind zombies. Um, yeah, the people are staring at boxes, confined to their screens. Uh, yeah, if only there was a way to make it interactive, like get them outside, and if only they could like reach out and like touch it, you know. Um, so yeah, like people, like people learn by doing, like I said earlier, it's just the best way to learn. Um, like I always have to, whenever I'm reading something, I always have to make notes, because otherwise like I just won't remember it. I have to kind of do it, I have to kind of like convert it into my own language, something I can understand, something personal to me, otherwise I just won't remember it. Also, maybe because I'm really distracted, I don't know. But, um, but yeah, everyone experiences, we all experience the world through our core senses. So, you know, sight, hearing, you know, smell, taste, touch, you know, that's how we experience the world. But um, animation can only go so far here. It, you know, sure it has, you know, sight and hearing, but missing out all the other, all the other different things. So, um, so my idea brings them all, brings them all. You know, kids, you know, they're outside in the real world, you know, looking for stickers and, um, and uh, you know, just experiencing the world you know, the world with all their senses and everything, um, but using their, tech, their phones as well. Um, so the experience will open their minds from a young age, um, inspire them to question what they know, um, see the world in a whole new way. Um, uh, I want to, you know, just get them using their creativity, um, explore their special powers before they get older and start to forget what that's like. So I imagine something of like a treasure hunt, like a digital treasure hunt. Uh, that you know, uh, puzzles to figure out, games to play, takes them on this journey. They're going, it's just, and it's all about that sticker stuff with the animation. You know, kids love animation. Kids love stickers. Kids want to be outside. Uh, you know, um, so it's all about that interaction. I want them to be participating constantly, putting a bit of themselves into it every step of the way. Um, you know, I want them to get out. I want them to get them like making things and stuff like that. I want it to maybe one of them could lead somewhere. You know, it's all. To, like, actual activities, the sticker, the sticker treasure hunt could just be a thing that brings everything else together. I want to be this whole experience of all these different creative disciplines. So I imagine they go and they, you know, they scan it, and then they've got this little puzzle they have to figure out in a sticker nation style or whatever, and then it leads them to this new, to something, this activity where it's something wanted by people. Um, maybe there's a blank wall or something where they've got to, they're encouraged to. Part of it is you've got to, I don't know, make a do something, make a painting or something. And then my idea is then after they've done it, they can then like, I imagine it's like an app or something, but um, they can then scan it with their phones and um, the information then gets fed back into the app. So I want them to be participating, put themselves a bit, put themselves into it every step of the way and like just giving back and it all feeding back into the app every all the time. Um, 
another thing, maybe, you know, one of the other crews could lead something more musical, you know, they've got to go make music and record it with their friends, you know, stuff like that, kids doing stuff together. Um, um, and yeah, again, all that information feeds back into the app. Um, I also kind of like the idea of like throughout their adventures, uh, the, the app, maybe they're walking along, maybe the app could just give a little notification. I just like the idea of kind of asking them questions all the time about stuff. Just I don't know, like what, you know, how are you enjoying, what, I don't know, just loads of different questions. It could be something simple as like, I don't know, what did you have for breakfast? Or something more deep, like, you know, what's the scariest thing ever happened to you? Or something like that. And then I take, I imagine at the end of the thing, when they finally got to the end of the treasure and they've completed everything, they get a little, they get a little QR code on their phone, and then they can use that to then redeem their prize at maybe a shop or, I don't know, somewhere, I don't know. It, it can lend itself to lots of different things, like it doesn't just have to be this, it can be, it lends itself to, you know, advertising, promotion, any other brand, it can be an extension of <coughs> different things, you know, maybe food products or, I don't know, it could be anything, it's, it's kind of pretty open to, sort of, it's a pretty open idea. Um, so a bit of this thing, I like the idea of at the end of it, it kind of, it, it kind of all uh, mixes all this stuff they've done together into the app, uh, mixes it all together, and then creates some kind of big piece of art. So it's like a collaborative thing they've all done together, and um, mix somehow. Uh, yeah. Um, so yeah. So yeah, kids that have been exposed to more know more and do more. It's as simple as that. Um, I want this experience to be sort of a springboard for the rest of their lives to. Question what they know. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you for this amazing ask. Thank you for this amazing film. It's uh, very, very visionary and, and yeah, it was very amazing. And uh, yeah, the question to you is do you have any questions? Something you want to know? I'm interested about uh, this uh, the figure nation. Yeah. Um, is it uh, at, which, at which point are you in, in this project now? So, if anyone in, in the room is interested to, to collaborate with a brand with a, with a, yeah. with a, with a yeah. content, uh, well, they should talk about it. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm just I, I, I'll still go do the the idea, the, the sticker stuff. I just make extra stickers and and um, I'm just putting it out there, going to different events sort of like this and doing talks and just out there and stuff like that. Um, and still just promoting it and developing it and just, you know, just, just where it is, is where I've sort of shown. Yeah. And um, you, your world you, you're creating is very co colourful and you use a, a lot of media techniques and, mm -hmm. and you mix it up and bring something new up. Um, how does the, the ideas for your project come to you? Is there some, somebody who says, yeah, do it like uh, do something well, like that? Uh, well, you know, no idea is original. original. Like I said, I, I showed you the what, what inspired me, that, that film, you know, you know, the film with the Caleb Wood, is that, that, that's kind of where I got the, that idea. But um, usually it comes from, as a, from somewhere else in the world, with obviously somebody else's. But, um, you know, I do lots of drawing and writing and just lots of stuff like that. And, all the time, so that's that's really where I get ideas and stuff from, just through my drawing, writing and stuff. Being, yeah. Okay. Thank you. What are the next steps you're going to do? The next steps. Uh, well, at some point I want to go to university. Uh, maybe next year. I've got a place in Bournemouth, which is really good. Mm -hmm. A really good study, really good place in the UK. I have a place, and I can go there whenever I want. Maybe next year. Um, but I've got loads of other things I'm kind of busy with at the moment, so. So maybe next year when I'm not so busy, because, uh, yeah, maybe next year. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Und wir machen noch eine kleine Kaffeepause bis um 10 nach 4.